leave office. If the man can get away with anything, why should he not just extend his term in office and, and nullify the elections of 2016 uh, based on some national emergency which he creates? He could easily create a national emergency, couldn't he? Lincoln did it. Didn't his hero Abraham Lincoln suspend habeas corpus? Abraham Lincoln was a fascist dictator. I've told you that before. You may glorify him and make him into something he wasn't. Do it or do it. Do it at your own uh, uh, at your own risk. Lincoln was a fascist dictator. I have spent hours researching the di dictatorship of Abraham Lincoln, and I, I try to put it into government zero, but it fell on many de many people's uh, on deaf ears because their minds are made up. They're not flexible. They're not open. And the reason I mention Abraham Lincoln is because he's one of Obama's role models. If 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 Lincoln can suspend habeas corpus. If Lincoln can arrest journalists, what's to stop the maniac from doing it? What's to stop the snake from suspending elections for only 90 days, for example? For example, the maniac can, can uh, orchestrate um, a terrorist attack. They could do that overnight. Can't? They just did one in uh, Southern California. There's every reason to believe the government knew these people would go off. Every reason in the world. They claim they weren't monitoring that. Muslim maniacs, social media postings, bull. Bull. They monitored every last one of them. They knew she was a jihadist. They're just covering it up. They knew who he and her were. Maybe they didn't know exactly the where and when, but they knew they were going to perform an act of terror, and they did so. So what is to prevent a huge event from occurring just before the election so Obama can declare a national emergency and suspend the elections temporarily only for 90 days. This is how he would do it. He would say we're going to have to suspend elections for only uh, 90 days because a part of the power grid went out and we can't count the votes. So for the safety and sake of America and Americans, and your national security is our most important product. Uh, we have Mr. Clapper here to the right. We have my, my national security team, my great national security team around me. There's uh, Mr. Clapper, uh, here's Jay Johnson. This, this wonderful, superb list of individuals are making certain that an attack like this never happens again. We're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to study it. We're going to have a blue ribbon commission to make sure this never happens again. In the interim, we're going to suspend the, your vote just for 90 days until we can get that grid back up to count those votes. I'm Barack Hussein Obama, and I approve of this message. Have a nice day. Michelle and I are going off to uh, Vail. We'll take a nice ski vacation while the votes are being counted. You say, okay, it's a fantasy. You've had a lot of fun. You know, it's a fantasy, is it? I'll be right back. Savage. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you get what's going on. I mean, there's a revolt going on in the country. You have a revolutionary administration, but the problem for most people is they can't put the pieces together. You have a Marxist revolutionary in the White House. You say, that's impossible. He has not taken over the means of production. He has not taken over the means of distribution. Well, you're right. In a limited sense, you are correct, but you're wrong in the bigger sense because those were the means of controlling a population in Russia in 1915, 16, 17, was production and distribution. But now it's 100 years later, and we're living in the United States of America. So on another front of what's going on in front of your eyes on the Obama in Government Zero, I want to read you a news story. I'll bring it down home, baby. We'll do a 1960s, bring it all down home, baby. Obama's liberal agenda gets federally funded rides through the arts. Came out today, Washington Times. Taxpayers will be forking over $27 million in 2016 for federally funded arts projects, which include a performance by a San Francisco drag queen, art installations with climate change themes, and theater plays that showcase food stamps, Obama's immigration amnesty, lesbianism, and gun rights opposition. The so-called National Endowment for the Arts which is nothing but a slush fund for the left-wing fanatics, gives out taxpayer money for uh, so-called artistic invent endeavors across the nation. And they just announced their latest grants for fiscal 2016. People could not believe these grants. But then they are most, in some cases rather, in Nancy Pelosi's backyard, a woman who supports uh, 
leather parades where people parade nakedly and beat each other up with whips. And so the grants include $10,000 for the world premiere of Cocked, a play about a pair of lesbians whose anti-gun attitudes are challenged when a relative comes to visit in Chicago. $30,000 to support a mini-series in San Francisco, Pelosi's backyard, entitled Gender in Transition by a Drag Queen. $35,000 $35,000 for affordable housing and sustainable communities for San Francisco artists. That's an arts grant. $20,000 to support a series of public art presentations on the theme of climate change in Minneapolis. $30,000 to support the continuing development and production of Ping Chung Company's Kaleidoscope, Further Adventures in Pre- and Post-Racial America. And the so-called artists who are nothing but government propagandists. Develop a multidisciplinary work that is inspired, they say, in part by the killings of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown. Are you you following the drift of what I'm saying to you? The NEA, it's not about wasteful government spending. It's part of Obama's agenda, which is to pervert all of our culture. Remember I say borders language culture. Now do you understand the culture side of it? This is not just about wasteful government spending. This is about perverting our culture completely to take over the means of production and distribution to control the population. He's controlling the population by taking over the media, by taking over every aspect, every avenue of the government, every aspect of the media. He owns it all. He owns it all. He owns Zuckerberg, lock, stock, and barrel. Savage. The president gives demagoguery a brand new meaning. You would think that this man, after all these years, would have understood that he's dividing the nation, not uniting the nation. But he didn't. Nor does he care, because he's doing just what he wants to do, which is to divide black against white, white against black, gay against straight, straight against gay, Asian against Hispanic, Hispanic against black. That's what this man is spending every waking moment thinking about how to do. Now, I could rail against the speech he gave, and I can refute virtually point by point what this demagoguery uh, was about, and I will do so. I will do so because it's required to do so. It's my job. The speech was very familiar. I had heard speeches like this, and I've read of speeches like this in literature, the literature of the Soviet Union, the literature of Animal Farm written by George Orwell. It's classic Soviet propaganda enacted on the backs of, of African Americans. This is the truth. You have to understand what I'm saying to you. And he's not the only one to engage in this, but we'll play many of these speeches and I'll, well, I'll explain to you why they agitate me. Now, I didn't listen to the speeches, just as the great president didn't listen to Netanyahu's address, so we're told, but he, he read the transcript. Well, I didn't listen to this speech, but I have the transcript and I have the speech for you to listen to. And before we get into this new low point in the American presidency, this new range of demagoguery, I want to tell you something that's very important. Many of you have listened to Michael Savage for 20 years, know that this show is not a straight-line show, know that it's not straightly one way or the other, that I use intuition, I use other parts of my being in my show, ranging from mere storytelling to dreams and such like that. Well, I had two of the most profound dreams in my life, and I don't know if they're related to Obama's new low in demagoguery, but I'm going to tell you about them. The first one I will call the white owl. I was on a trail, you see, in the woods with my son and another person, because I used to walk him in the woods a lot when he was a kid. And as I walk now in the woods of my later years, I came upon a woman who I thought was walking a dog on a very long leash, It was like a 30-foot lead. And I stopped for a moment because I didn't recognize the breed. And as the breed turned, I saw it was a white owl with one eye, and one eye hollowed out. And I said to the woman, do you often go to this place in the woods? She said, yes, we will know each other. The next scene was of Michael Savage lecturing in a small seminar room somewhere in a private facility on the meaning of rain. And then I gave a seminar to another small group on hunger. And I said, most of you understand by now that you could eat the most expensive meal in New York City, the most expensive meal in Los Angeles, and not enjoy one bite of your meal. 
because you're hungry. And I said, I'm going to teach you today how to truly be hungry, which is to experience hunger so you can taste your food again. Now comes the most important part of the dream. The next dream was of a black woman in a black van. It was an older van. She was a middle-aged, heavy-set woman. And around her were a group of black teenagers, and she was speaking to them quietly. And here's what this black woman said in my dream, this white man's dream. Here's what this black woman said. She said, America is a deep country, and you must find forgiveness in yourselves in order to find the deepness in this nation. Let me repeat it for you because it's what I had prayed to God the first black president would be teaching America. But he's not teaching forgiveness. He's teaching division. He's teaching hatred. He's teaching envy. He's teaching the antithesis of his alleged Christian beliefs. You know, we hear all the time he's not a Muslim, he's a Christian. doesn't matter what his religion is, he's not practicing either one. He is not practicing either religion. He is practicing the religion of a demagogue. The black woman in the black van, speaking to the black teens in my dream, said to these teens, America is a deep nation. You must find forgiveness in yourselves to find the deepness of this great nation. She was a healer. The show is called The White Owl. The show is about forgiveness and Obama's inability to offer forgiveness. Not for wrongs he's experienced, by the way. He was a spoiled white kid with a black father. Then he decided to become a downtrodden black man who he himself had experienced racism when he never did. See, he grew up in Honolulu, which is a multi-ethnic place, where there's almost no racial discrimination except against whites, perhaps. And he had no experiences of racism, and yet he wraps himself in all the rhetoric of those who did. And I said to you, I saw the white owl. But if you'd like to hear something even more strange, just join me in this thought for one minute. I'm telling you these dreams are real. I'm telling you I had these dreams. I'm sharing these dreams with you for a reason. Because my soul spirit came to me in my dream. Those of you who are intuitive, those of you who are artists, those of you who deal in other dimensions, those of you who know that there's another dimension other than the two-dimensional world in which we live and the two-dimensional world in which we talk about all day long, which is the world of politics, which is really a one-dimensional world of cardboard men and women. There's another world or many worlds. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And I'm reaching across these worlds to you, my listener, to try to understand that the only thing that can save this nation, the only thing that can save this nation is spiritual. We have a void of spirituality in this nation that is not only hollowing us out, but destroying us entirely from top to bottom. And only by reaching within ourselves for our own spiritual center, whatever your religion may be, or whatever your spiritual orientation, orientation may be, only by reaching into that realm or to that realm of yourself can you survive in this void created by Barack Obama, perhaps the most evil man to have ever invaded the White House. And I will use that word again. He is evil through and through because he knows better. He's a very, very bright man. In fact, he's a genius. He's a genius at dividing people. He's a genius at dismantling the greatest nation the world has ever seen. He's a genius at not tackling the worst barbarians to hit the planet since Genghis Khan and getting away with saying he's at war. He's a genius at dismantling our military. He's a genius at dismantling our economy by keeping interest rates at zero so the government can borrow without, let us say, increasing the debt beyond the comprehensible increase in debt. You see, if interest rates were even 2%, the debt would be skyrocketing to a point where it would be, wow, look what he's doing. But by having... Grandma Yellen keep the interest rates at zero. He can borrow trillions to keep the government afloat. And then the interest rate is sort of maintained at only about two trillion dollars or whatever it may be. God knows what the man is doing to us. You'll soon need a wheelbarrow filled with paper currency to buy a loaf of bread if this is not stopped. But I want to go back to the dream. Because if you think that that was enough, it all happened within a a short period of time, the dreams occurred at dawn. I woke up, and my body was filled with, what do you call that? Um, 
when your your skin gets, you know, when you get like freaked out, 